acid. And then it's then ground down into the paprika, uh, into their little tins. And if you wanna go ahead to the next slide. All right, and now I'll move on to Portamar. So Portamar is one of the newer brands that we do import. Um, we start importing them in June of 2020. Uh, we have a variety of products from them, uh, but today I'll be showcasing our mussels and escabeche, as well as the octopus and olive oil. You can go to the next slide, please. So Portamar is located in the Galicia region of Northwest Spain. So the region is noted for its seafood and especially the razor clams, the cockles and mussels. And the waters where those products come from are clean, pristine, and just a beautiful bright blue color. So like uh, Safinder, Portamar is also a vertical operation where they do control every piece of the process. So they're the ones out there uh, fishing and they own the fishing boats. And then everything goes back to their factory, uh, which is also in Galicia. And they package everything accordingly. And really the only thing between Portamar and you, the consumer, is us, um, since we're the importers. And everything is immediately packaged. Everything is incredibly fresh. Um, and they have all the certifications necessary for uh, the USDA, but also they do participate in some extra certifications um, just towards traceability and sustainability, especially fishing sustainability, which I know is very important for a lot of consumers. Um, so they're able to uh, provide all of that tracking information for everyone. And you can go ahead to the next slide, please. All right, so the first product we have is the mussels. So as you can see here, we just have an, a little picture of the mussel uh, package. And then also once you pop the tin open, uh, what the insides would look like. So the mussels, they're great. They're, uh, everything in this line is ready to eat. It's perfect for anyone who's looking to expand their tapas uh, offerings. So, um, you know, you can just open up the top. You can have uh, some toasted bread with them if you want. We can eat them plain, uh, perfect with cheese. And then we also do, uh, you could, you know, throw them in a pasta or a rice if you'd like. Um, we've done some recipes where we, do, we add them into paella. It's a little different because, um, you know, everything else is, you know, everything starts raw, but this is lightly fried and then packaged into a traditional sauce of the Galicia region that's made from vinegar and pepper, uh, paprika. Can go ahead, next slide, please. And then we also have the octopus and olive oil, uh, which is again from the Galician region. It's caught in cold water. Um, again, sustainable fishing operations done there. Uh, no section is overfished. So they take the octopus, they fish it, um, they'll section it out, and then it's immediately packed in a premium Spanish olive oil um, that Portamar uh, sources from uh, local olive oil um, farms. So again, perfect product where you could just pop up in the tin and serve it. You can use it in a salad with a bright citrus vinaigrette to really bring out the flavors. Um, Again, you could put in a pasta or rice. You could, um, you know, make a seafood salad with it if you if you'd like. But yeah, the options are endless with all these products because they're they go from ready to eat to you know using your culinary imagination um, to do what you'd please with them. So um, that's it for me. So I want to thank you everyone for your time and thank you uh, for having me again. I appreciate it. And now I believe it's over to Kanchi. Yeah. Okay. And let me get your um, your presentation up, Kanchi. And it, and I also want to say I realize that some of you may have not received, may not have received all of the samples. You will be getting them in the next uh, day. Um, we apologize for the delay, as you have no doubt heard, um, shipping issues are just proliferating and um, we're sorry that if you didn't get them for this presentation today. 
um, but you will have them very soon. So now I will share um, Hanchi's presentation. Just one second, please. Thank you, Susan. Um, so yeah, um, me too. I wanted to thank Culture Media and Fruits from Spain for having me. Um, and today I'll be talking on behalf of Miles Anta, uh, which is a Spanish honey company um, that has been around for more than three years. And we have been producing um, organic uh, uh, honey, which is the which is our brand, that's Stoka. That's the honey that we're talking about today. And on the first slide, um, the honey on your left side, which is the um, which is the uh, multi-floral honey. Yeah, thank you. Um, that's the one that the chef will be using because we thought, you know, pollen is a little bit um, more weird, or I guess people less know know less about pollen. Uh, but I'll be explaining a little bit about how we use pollen. Um, if you can move your slide, that would my slide that would be great. Thank you. So um, the founder was David Corral, and he started in the north of Spain, um, which is Galicia. That's where the the red dot is. Um, and we are located in a city called Lugo. And um, our honey comes from the high mountains of Galicia. And uh, as I said, we have been producing honey, organic honey for more than 20 years. And um, he, David, the founder was the one who established our values, which is the protection of the bees, the conservation of our natural heritage, uh, betting on sustainable development, uh, empowering the biodiversity of the species. Um, and we combine both tradition and innovation so that our honey is 100% raw, it, has, it isn't filtered, it has no additives, it has no heat treatments as well. And we are producers as well as packers. So we control um, the production and the tra traceability of our products. Um, if you could move the slide, please. Thank you. Uh, this is a picture of our landscape. That's what I was saying that we uh, want to protect our environment. And the next one is also a picture of our environment, um, which is basically these are the mountains of Galicia. Um, we have 8,000 hives that, that are organic and seven around 7,000 hives that are, um, we call them conventional, which is the honey that we sell only in Spain. Um, because the organic honey is the one that we export. Um, and uh, the difference between the organic hives and the conventional hives is that the organic are uh, located three kilometers, I looked that up, which should be eight point, oh, I mean, sorry, 1.8 miles approximately um, away from any inhabited places or any places in any places which have uh, conventional uh, agriculture or livestock breeding. And uh, our beehives are located at least at six at 600 meters of height, which should translate to 1,968 feet tall, approximately. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you could uh, put the next slide, please. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about our certifications because as I said, we are producers as well as packers. So we control our product um, and we have the IFS food certifications, certification, sorry. So basically means that uh, has all the appropriate processes. It guarantees the safety, the quality of the product and that it complies with the required uh, uh, customer requirements as it has all the customer requirements. And then we have um, two certifications, both the USDA organic and the CRAEGA. Um, I'm sure you are all familiar with the USDA organic um, and the CRAEGA is basically the same, but uh, from Spain, so from the north of Spain. So that would be from the regulatory council of the uh, of uh, ecological agriculture that's roughly translated. Um, so yeah, so that basically both of those certifications uh, say that our, our product is 100% organic. Um, and yeah, if you could put the next slide, please. Thank you. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our awards. Um, we won in 2020 the award for um, at Biomiel for the best organic honey in the world. Uh, that's the little, it's next to the multi-floral honey, but we want it. We want it for the Toka brand entirely. 
um, it's there just for aesthetic purposes. <laughs> and this year in 2022, our multi-floral honey uh, won the gold in the London Honey Awards and our Heather Honey won in both uh, 2021 and in 2022, uh, two stars at the Great Taste Awards. Um, the multi-floral is the one that the chef, uh, the chef Damien is gonna use today. And it has a floral scent, it's very rich in flavor and um, has a very dark color, umber color. Yeah. Um, yeah, and next slide, please. Okay, so this is a picture of all of our products. We offer, as I said, both pollen and uh, honey. Uh, we have honey from the high mountains, that would be heather, um, chestnut, and the multifloral. Then we have two specialties, which I'll be going about a little bit later, um, which are honey and propolis and honey and um, royal jelly. Then we have one from the coast, which is the eucalyptus honey. And for pollen, we have two varieties, uh, chestnut and multifloral. Next slide, please. Next slide. Bungie, I don't think I have another slide. Sorry. That's, that's go anywhere. Let me try. Let me try. Okay. Okay, because I know you had a slide with contact information, right? Yeah, I had like three more slides. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Let me try again. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Sorry. That's okay. If you prefer, just because of timing, I can um, talk and I can send it later. No, I just yeah, there's that. Yeah, it's very strange. Gosh, yeah. gremlins. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, hold on one second. I'm sorry. To try to slideshow. Slideshow. Okay. There. There we go. Yeah. Great. Hey. Thank you. Oh, sorry. No, 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 that's fine. Um, so first, I wanted to talk to you about pollen. So if you could go to that slide, that would be great. Yeah, nope. <laughs> yeah, that's it, thank you. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about pollen because nowadays it's a very um, popular product in the USA for our con consumers at least. Uh, customers, sorry, and many are getting interested in it. And before I worked for this company, I had not a lot of idea how it worked. Um, so you can basically take it by itself because it dissolves in your mouth, but it has a very, I would say, strong taste. A lot of people like it, but uh, but you can take it in dissolved in liquids, basically. So you dissolve it in, I've seen people dissolve it in orange juice or in your yogurt, kefir, and it is a multivitamin complex and it has high antioxidant content. So it protects you from chronic diseases um, and it reduces inflammation and swelling in general. Uh, and also reduces the stress and is good for the immune system as well. Next slide, please. As for the royal jelly, royal jelly is what the queen bee feeds from. And it helps with exhaustion, tiredness in general. So that's why it has revitalizing properties, helps the memory and learning, feeling general feeling of well-being. And um, it helps regulate cholesterol as well because it is high because of its high content in the, uh, folic acid and in niacin as well. Yeah, in my next slide. Thank you. And well, and our last specialty that we make, it is honey and propolis. And propolis is something that bees make as well. Um, so basically they produce it from the sap. They, miss, they mix that sap with their big swaths and then they create the propolis, which they use as a coating to build their hives. And it has been used for ages for its medicinal properties. And it is very common here in Lugo to use propolis. That's why we have it. 
Um, and in general, it soothes. So that's why it's good for the vocal cords or hoarseness. Uh, it's also good for colds or for throat infections in general. So it's very traditional here. Yeah, and my final slide. So yeah, that would be it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much, Susan, as well. And uh, thank you very much to everyone for coming, well, or I guess um, tuning in and for having me. And if you have any doubts, any questions, or if you liked our products, please do not hesitate to contact me. And now I'll leave you with Susan and with Chef Damien, which I believe they are at the restaurant of Chefs, of Chefs Damien, and they'll show you how to use all these products. Thank you very much. Thank you, Conchi. Really appreciate it. Um, and let's see, we are going to bring my camera on here and uh, go. Okay, here we are. Here's Damien. Hi, everybody. Ready to show you all kinds of beautiful things. I'm going to move my screen down so you can see what he's going to be doing, but you'll also hold, I can't move it that far down. So you'll also hold things up, right? Yeah. So he can see, yeah. people can see what you're doing. You still want to see my pretty smile, right? That's right, right. that's right, okay. of course we do. Okay, so we've, uh, David's got a lot to show you here. So I will step out of the way and let him do that. All right, cool. So we have a lot of beautiful products that we're going to showcase for y'all and um, in varying preparations, some of them. Um, we wanted to do some stuff easy so that it's very approachable for i always think of something like what my mother would do or how she would do it because i to cut out some steps and to make it more approachable so we have our tin fish we start off with our tin fish so i have both the tin fish right now here the octopus and the mussels we marinate the mussels up a little bit ahead of time um if you haven't experienced spanish tin fish you're missing out it's nothing like the other stuff that you see on the shelves the Spaniards really know what they're doing when they're tinning or packaging up products, whether it be fish, cephalopods, uh, shellfish, roes, even vegetables. Um, we'll use certain items in the restaurant because the quality is just so high and it's delicious and it's unique also too. And you know, if you have a retail market or you're selling other items, they're really great to have in to sell your customers to have in their larder at home. We have them in our larder at home. Whenever we want to have guests over, we want to do something different. We'll just, you know, pull out. And like, I've used octopus so many times. I pulled it out. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to jazz up a salary. But I don't have, you know, 10 hours to slow braise my octopus at home. So I'm going to utilize some really good, high quality tin Spanish octopus. So what we're going to do first is we, you know, for the mussels, we got some good sourdough bread. We lightly toasted it. So, you know, you know, hear that crack? Okay. So we got that. We're gonna do a little riff on uh, pan con tomate. It's like one of our uh, things that we're known for here. So uh, local made sourdough bread, garlic, rub that on there. I'm gonna hit all the sides, go around the outside too. Don't miss all that. Your hands are gonna smell great afterwards. No vampires after this, you're gonna be good to go, okay? Then we're gonna generously, we have some Local tomatoes to get towards the end of the season here. So we only do this in the early summer to the very early fall. Put some of our tomatoes on there. This is a nice vehicle for these mussels. And these are just chopped up super, super fine. Boom, just like that, right? I'm gonna cut it in half so we can share with somebody else. If you wanna eat the whole thing, it's okay. I'm not gonna judge. So then we have this. Then we're gonna place our muscles on here. Here's where everybody gets to be Thomas Keller for the, for the uh, 15 minutes. You know, place all your muscles there. You can tweeze or not tweeze if you want. Now what we do next, some nice uh, sea salt. And then we have our beautiful Spanish extra virgin olive oil. We only use Spanish extra virgin olive oil, Chabal. This is some nice organic stuff. And then drizzle it, lots of it, cover it. Let it seep in there and let it hang out because you want that bread to be nice and toasted. And then that, with the muscles and everything else, 
what you have with the tomato and the olive oil, it's gonna make a little nice harmony of different flavors, textures, and deliciousness, okay? Then we're gonna go into our octopi. So we have our octopus here. We have some of our Yukon gold potatoes. We boil these off ahead of time. We made some pickled onions. We always have a bunch of pickles hanging around. They don't have pickled onions. There's other pickles that you can use. Um, even your regular pickles at home, you wanna cut up some fancy pickles you have already at home, do something awesome, it's great. But this is gonna be a nice nice little top of that you're gonna have. And we're gonna incorporate some of our uh, three month old manchego cheese into this as well too. So what we're gonna do, let's see if I can do this now. We're gonna, we're gonna tip y'all down. You guys see? Okay, there we go. All right, so we're gonna get our potatoes. This is a great thing that you can do ahead if you want. This is, can be like a little tapa you can lay out on a platter for a lot of people. You have a party and put toothpicks into it and kind of uh, make up little skewers with it because the octopus is nice chunks. You can cut up as small as you want too. So don't be afraid to experiment with it. Then we have this guy here. And then we have our manchego here already. So I'm gonna stud this all around. Damon, can you talk about the idea that a lot of people think that seafood doesn't go with cheese? Oh no, seafood definitely goes with cheese. It's delicious with cheese. It's just, you gotta pick the right cheese to go with the right seafood. And that's why we have a three month manchego. So it's super delicate. It's nothing that's a 12 month or, or older. So it's not super sharp. It's delicate, it's softer, it's butterier. It can take a lot of salt and it can take a lot more nuance. It's kind of like a, it's a vehicle that's gonna do its job for this. You, you want it to play hand in hand with all the other ingredients, okay? So we can either go with some olive oil on there, you know, or we can go with some beautiful uh, Spanish uh, Pedro Jimenez sherry vinegar. So we're gonna do that and I'm gonna kind of jump ahead of myself because I, I do love this next product that we're gonna talk about. And it's kind of like, uh, in a certain sense, my Frank's Red Hot. I put that S on everything. So this is a little uh, pimentone oil. And then we're gonna do a little splash, just gingerly, of this nice Pedro Jimenez sherry vinegar on there and a little bit of sea salt. So you have that and it's nice, it's dressed. Go in there, start eating it, and you're gonna get all nice and little complexities and stuff. If you wanna dress it up a little more, Hit your favorite, you know, these are a little bit of chopped chives. Hit up some chives, tarragon, even parsley in there. And it's just something that ends up then bumping up a little more. But you see, you're gonna have the texture of this octopus that is super, super, it's perfectly twosome. That cheese and then the potato, it's all gonna go really, really well. And then that between that cherry vinegar and then the pimentono, I mean, it's just a great dish. And I mean, this is something that you, get when you're kind of bar hopping up in San Sebastian to different tapas bars. And you're going to tell us how to make that pimentone oil, right? Yep. So now we're going to, it's a nice slide into pimentone oil. So, okay, here's my pile of pimentone. Don't take it away from me. Um, I love this stuff. The moment I tasted this stuff, I absolutely adored it. Um, I like, I, most chefs are like, oh man, I love bacon. Oh no, no, no. I love pimentone because if you uh, are trying to cook vegan or vegetarian too, you can have pimentone into something and it'll give you that smoky, smoky, meaty flavor that you're looking for as a meat eater that you can replace the flavors with a little bit or bump up your flavors a lot. And pimentone works well with a lot of different things. We utilize it in a lot of applications in the restaurant here at Cheval. One of the main ones is what we just saw our pimentone oil. So we take either grapeseed or canola oil and then we gently steep it in certain ratios because we have different ratios for different items of oils that we're gonna make. This one is a heavy ratio. So you can smell it. You smell that smoky mustiness that's really good in there, but that sweet pepper flavor as well. And it's really, really good. So we take this and then we transform that and then make an aioli out of it with this. And then you can see that you have this beautiful kind of you know, orange red color. And then you got this kind of smoky mayo that you can spread on anything. Cheeseburgers, great. Grilled cheese, amazing. You want to dip your pretzels in here? Wow. Or your French fries? Awesome. And then once it's made and you make this stuff at home, or if you even want to kind of like um, 
cheat a little bit too. You can put a little bit of some really extra heavy mayo and put a little bit of just pimentone powder into it. Whip that up, let it sit, whip it up again. It takes about two days for it to kind of infuse really well. And you can cheat on that if you don't want to make your own homemade with the oil and stuff too. But once you have the oil like this, you can go with oil, a little sherry vinegar, you make your own vinaigrette. And again, that can go on salad dressings. You can have that hang out in your fridge for a month or more and still access it and be good. So it's a versatile product that you can put on a lot of different things. It's the base to our house spice that we hear that we dust our bluefish or our octopus or our, man, we use it on fish, lamb, um, venison. I mean, we've used it for a lot of different things. So it's not something that, oh, you can only use it on red meat or servings. Pimentone is so versatile. It's really, really good. So I don't know. I can't talk enough about pimentone. I love it. I mean, I would, like, like I said, it's my Frank's red hot. I put on everything. Um, <laughs> Also have it on cheese board. Yeah. You know, drizzle a little bit of that of crispy bread, top of your your uh, Yeah. It is delish. So that's gonna transition us into our next item. Spanish saffron. So I got a little cup here. So for those uninitiated with saffron, it has this beautiful sweet i mean it's it's a little citrusy i mean it just has this aroma that only saffron has and as we just saw it's super time consuming it's a lot of work that goes into making it um and it, it's special for a reason and again this item similar to the pimentone it has it's so versatile i, I think you know it's not used quite enough as we could. So we also turn this into an oil because we want to utilize it as much as we possibly can. So here's an oil that we make from it. So it gives us this kind of marigold color out of it. And you have this, when we make the oil, we bring it up just so it almost gets, it doesn't get super hot, but it gets just hot enough to almost toast the filaments a little bit. So then you get this, that sweet grassness, but you get this light toasted yeasty bread smell out of the oil of balsam. I mean, it just smells delicious and great. So then we also take some of it and infuse it into a pickling liquid where we will pickle some of our vegetables. Then we take both of those, you can kind of see it separated. We got our saffron vinegar and our saffron oil with some of the toasted saffron filaments in there into our vinaigrette. You kind of see them floating around there. And then we took some of our uh, end of the season squash here, pickled them, and they get stained, a nice little light stain with this. So we're gonna make a nice little salad out of this. And again, these are products, the saffron's a dry product. And if you make the oil or you make the vinegar and then you utilize the vinegar to pickle the vegetables and the oil for your dressing or you do it on bread or on cheese. So there's so much you can do and so much you can do and make and utilize it for a long period of time. So we're gonna take some of our local greens we got here. We have some beautiful mayo and cheese. We diced it, we sliced this up a little bit. We're gonna flip back down. Whoop. All right. So we got some of our cheese. We got our vinaigrette, we got our pickles. So again, just some nice greens. This is gonna be, and for a salad like this, I just wanna eat cheese heavy. I mean. I love cheese so much and it's just delicious. And this cheese too, the, the mayon, it's, you know, I cut it nice and a little bit thicker like this. And you can see we're at room temperature right now and it bends really, really well. And it's got this beautiful buttery deliciousness. And that butteriness is gonna go very, very well with the saffron vinaigrette. So let's take some of our squash and pickle it in our saffron liquid here. Color is just beautiful. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's the flavor of everything is just going to give off so much. And it's things like this that we don't really think about that much to utilize these ingredients for. Because, I mean, let's be honest, most of us have just heard of saffron. Let's just make risotto. No, there's so much more to, to utilize for it. And these are two ways that you can utilize it and you can do them together. You can do them separate. 
And then, you know, you're making dinner or, you know, you're, you're talking to your clients about all this and you're like, wow, that's great. Because you also, I mean, saffron is not the cheapest item either, but when you find different ways to utilize it and to spread it out, you're talking about a quality product. And with a quality product, it's, you know, you, you, you're getting something really, really good. So, you know, we have that salad dressed up there. We're just going to lightly drizzle it because I want to see this yellow on top of my cheese too. And some of these little filaments that are on top of there as well. And a little sea salt, and then we're gonna do a little pepper. Or uh, Barcelona red pepper mill there. Everything's Spanish today. All right, so then we have this guy here. So then you're gonna eat this. It's a simple dish, simple salad, but you utilize saffron in two separate ways. And now you have this in your larder, in your pantry to utilize, you know, any day of the week, you can get fancy and special and turn something that's, would be, I mean, salads, sometimes salads are kind of boring sometimes. I'm a big salad guy, so I love to have different stuff on my salads. When we were talking with, about, about this, I'm like, oh, dude, I want to make a saffron vinaigrette. It's so good, I love saffron. You know, or you can take that oil and you can turn, make a saffron aioli similarly to how we did with the pimentone aioli and just utilize that as your infused oil and you're going to get all that flavor, this nice, nice, beautiful, light, golden yellow color in there. And it's going to be striking. And again, utilize that on so many different things. Beautiful. Let's back up again. Yep. I think we might have a question. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, I think there might have been someone named Karen who had a question. Karen, do you want to use the chat? I don't see it right now. Okay. Go right ahead. So then we're going to go on to our honey. This honey is outstanding. It's beautiful. Number one, I was not expecting how, with the color of it, I was really taken with the striking deep color of it. And the smell of it, I mean, it, it's deep and complex. This, this stuff's fun. Um, let me just put some on a plate here for y'all. So then everybody can see what we're talking about. Let's go back down. All right, that's our plate for our fromage. Okay, so, you know, look how nice and dark and deep that honey is. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. And anytime you have a darker honey like this, one, you know it's not your average run-of-the-mill honey. I'll tell you that. You, you know that there's been some love put into this and some time to make this and to harvest it and to get everything done. And just the flavor of it. I mean, when, when I cracked the bottle, I was like, oh, wow, this thing is delicious. I, I kind of had to refrain from eating a lot more of it. So I was like, I'll do that after we're done. It's so good. It's so good. And I love honey. I'm a honey person. I love, love, love honey. It's so delicious. Oh my God. That is really special. And it's really good with Fino Sherry too. <laughs> I mean, we're doing a Spanish thing. So we had, a, we had to drink a little Fino yeah. Sherry, you know, a little Fino and Rama. And again, all these ingredients, I know they, they talk about it all the time, like, oh, where it grows is where wine should come from, yada, yada, yada. Everything we're doing here will go super, super well with varying sherries and Spanish vermouths too. So, you know, you guys have shops and you're selling sherry or vermouths from Spain too. Um, so, like this stuff will all pair up super, super well because this is what we do in the restaurant. We go through a lot of sherry. Um, so we're going to take some of our uh, cheese that we have here. Our uh, Marcia Alvino. Well done. We rehearsed that. Yeah. So, you know, it's washed in wine. Oh, man. It smells so good. And it, it's a goat cheese. Such a great cheese. It's a goat cheese, but it's a milder goat cheese. And it's semi firm. You know, it's got that nice little squeeze to it. So, we're just going to kind of make a light little composed cheese plate here. And again, this is kind of like, you know, Hanging out when you want to do a little uh, Netflix or uh, you know Disney Plus and hang out. 
cut this up into big chunks, as big as you want. And then I like this honey for this right here, going with this, with this queso, you know, we're gonna just take some and just drizzle it over it. And then like, honestly too, I mean, it's just beautiful to begin with because of how dark it is and this cheese is like kind of nice snowy white. So the contrasts are really, really good. And this is gonna taste so amazing. Now we're gonna do a little bit of salt on there. And then we just put, we'll put a couple pickles there for a little, little counterbalance, you know, if you want something, cause you got, now we got some sweet, we got some salty, we got some creamy, now we got some acid in there. That's the color. Yeah. And then if you want, you know, then you can have some of your bread, you know, to eat on the side, some of your favorite crackers. I mean, it's just something that you can then, you know, put together a nice little basket for people. With the, with the honey and the cheese and everything. So then you have all this and it's just, I mean, the, the flavor of the cheese with that honey, it, it really changes. I mean, it pairs oh up gosh. really, really well. I want to eat the whole plate. I don't want to be a pig about it, but it's really good because it melds the flavor so good together. Okay, we've got some questions. Let's see. Um, thank you, Mercedes. Mercedes says, great job, chef. Everything looks delicious. Awesome. Jeffrey asks if you should use the honey. Could you use the honey in a simple vinaigrette? Oh, yeah, 100%. Simple vinaigrette. I would say utilize, um, if you really, really, really want to use olive oil, use an olive oil that's very soft. Some of your, um, some of your Spanish ones, you'll find some softer ones. Some of the ones will definitely have a little more um, strength to them. This one that we're using here is great because it's kind of like a nice medium ground, but you can still taste the olive or use a really good grapeseed oil so that you get the complexity of that honey coming through. With this honey, I'm super curious now to try the other products. I kind of need that royal jelly because I need all that extra healthy benefit stuff coming in, you know. But um, I'm, I, I want to get some more of the, the products because if this is great, the other one's got to be great too. And um, honestly, this would also be great in your morning tea, you know, with like some nice caramel tea with this honey into it. It'll jump the, that flavor of caramel up really, really good. And I know this drizzle over top of some nice um, uh, ice cream will work great too. Yeah, I can see yeah. it in a hot toddy too. Well, I would, when I was, my, my wife um, is the most amazing talented pastry chef I know. And that's why I married her. She's awesome um, and, and beautiful. But um she was talking about hey you're doing this and that i think i'm gonna try she's like let me see what the honey tastes like and she tastes the honey it's like i'm gonna make a saffron and honey sorbet with this Whoa. later in the week so you know there's lots of different things that you can utilize these products for in a non-traditional sense too and again cooking doesn't really have steadfast rules there's a lot of experimentation that goes on with things and that's kind of you know, how we find new things. I mean, hey, sometimes you find something you don't work out so well, but then sometimes you hit like a grand slam and you want to keep that in your back pocket. These all are things you can keep in your back pocket that you can sell to your clients, your customers, make gift baskets of, and that will genuinely surprise people because all of these products pack a little bit of wow. That's what we got to remember is they pack some wow. You know, they're not just some mundane things. They're all some really good quality, awesome products. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. We have some time for Q and A now. And, um, so let's see. Thank you, Michelle. Absolutely beautiful sampling of Spanish products. Can't wait to get them into some of my family's favorite recipes. Um, how can we assist in getting our suppliers to get these lines available to us. Uh, let's see, maybe Jeffrey can answer that question um, or Victoria or Maria Jose. Uh, not, not Maria Jose. Sure, I'll, 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 I'll jump in. Yep. Uh, thank you. Uh, number one, you're interested in the product, I would say reach out to us either through Susan or myself. Uh, we can follow up with you later with the emails. 
and the, the suppliers can contact you directly and work out which distributors you're working with and so on, and then figure out what's the best way of getting it uh, the most economically to you and make it work for your operation. Great. And I think probably that Damien and I can put together a sheet, a sort of a one sheet of all um, these ideas that you saw today, and we'll send that out um, to everybody who was here, and you can, you can have it to print off and hand out to your customers when you have these products in your store so that you can give them some ideas of what to do with them. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Any questions for Conchi or for Victoria? More questions for Damien? Okay. Well, we do still have a few minutes. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a QA question. Do you import to Spanish table, Jeffrey? Sorry, can you repeat that again? Do you, um, do you import to Spanish Table? Cynthia, I'm assuming that's a- Right, I would say Spanish Table is a client to many of our suppliers. So it, 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 it is a possibility. Okay, great. Cynthia, again, if you wanna reach out to me, I can, um, I can put you in touch with Jeffrey or um, we can go from there. So Cynthia is one of our regulars. And um, I know some of you, I know Damien talked about olive oil. Some of you may be going to the second session um, or attending the second session because we're on Zoom uh, next Monday um, when you're actually going to hear from Jeffrey, who's a olive oil expert. And we're really excited to hear about that. Oh, thank I'm you. I'm looking forward to it. I would encourage you to sign up if you haven't. You're going to have a brief or rather brief uh, olive oil tasting, and I'll be able to teach you how to distinguish what is a good extra virgin. And I'll walk you through basically the skill set, how to go about it, how to evaluate it. And you should be able to come away in, at the end of that process and by yourself be able to judge what is a good extra virgin olive oil. And in that process, you're gonna to get to taste three really good extra virgins, olive oils. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, on behalf of Culture, I, uh, I really thank you for joining us this afternoon, and I thank you for your patience as I uh, figured out my way through doing uh, the Zoom, and also to all of our presenters, to Victoria, and to Conchi, and to Jeffrey, and to my dear friend Damien. Um, always fun to work with yeah. you. And um, if you come to Portland, Maine, you have to visit Cheval. Uh, let me know if you come. I'll, I'll uh, goodbye and say hello. And um, does anyone, I would leave it to everybody else to say their goodbyes as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Damien. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, thank you for Thank you. Me. Thank you both. Bravo, Chef Damien. Everything was delicious. Thank Great. you. Great thank products. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. All right, good night, everybody. Thank you again. Bye. Bye.